Everybody good? Okay. Hey, I'm Chris Fiore. I'm the communications manager for the city of South Lake Tahoe, C-H-R-I-S-F-I-O-R-E. Uh, I'm joined here by Ray Jarvis, our public works director, and uh, Dave Stevenson, who's a lieutenant with the South Lake Tahoe Police Department. We just want to kind of give you guys an update about um, the story that's kind of gone viral over the past couple of days and give you guys uh, some more information that we've sort of come to terms with over the past, uh, I don't know, 24 hours or so. So um, for, I'm going to let them talk about their respective departments, but what I did want to say was, um, you know, when we send out these releases about uh, heavy snow and not parking your cars in snow removal areas, and that's dangerous, this is exactly the kind of thing that we're talking about. These things are dangerous. And we want to make clear that this woman was homeless. Uh, there are uh, places in the community uh, and resources in the community for homeless folks. Um, the city of South Lake Tahoe partners uh, with the Tahoe Homeless Coalition. Uh, they've just opened up their warm room. It's a place for people to go. So sleeping in your car does not have to be the only option here. We want people to know that there are options out there for them and there are better options than, than doing what happened in this particular situation. So with that said, I'll turn it over to Ray. Afterwards, we'll take some questions from you guys. So uh, Ray? Sure. Thank you. Um, yeah, I just wanted to uh, follow up with what Chris said. Uh, it was Sunday, uh, February 17th, uh, where one of our operators bumped into a parked vehicle on the side of the road on, road on Cedar Avenue near State Line. Um, this is one of the things that we encounter during snow removal operations when folks leave their cars parked in, in the right of way on the roads. Um, by code, that's not permitted. Um, it just creates a lot of problems for our operators. It slows down snow removal operations uh, and just uh, creates situations where we have to then go back later, dig them out, and either cite them or tow them. So from that standpoint, um, our concern obviously is safety of folks like the lady that was uh, in the car and for our operators. We don't want our operators getting out of their equipment uh, and they need to keep moving. Uh, particularly when we've had as much snow as we've had uh, this season. Um, so I just wanted to reiterate that that's a really important factor. We'd like to remind folks not to park in the right of way. Um, it, in retrospect, uh, we are very fortunate that we actually bumped into this car. Uh, it could have turned out quite differently. We're glad that it did not. Um, and we were able to uh, help this woman get out of the car uh, and get to safety. So. We're happy about that. Um, again, we've had a lot of snow. Uh, a lot of our roadways are narrower than, narrower than we would like them to be. Um, our operators have been working around the clock for nearly four weeks now with all the snow that we've had in the month of February. Um, so uh, we continue to work. <laughs> we expect uh, a, a two more series of storms to come in, one this weekend, one the middle of next week. Um, even though tomorrow is meteorological spring, which is uh, hopeful, uh, we still expect to have quite a bit of snow here in town. Uh, the Sierras have received, I don't know what the totals are, I had just heard it reported that uh, 24 feet in the month of February alone, I don't know how much of that is at lake level, but um, it's a lot. So we just want to remind folks to please stay safe, uh, remove your cars from the roadway so we don't have to work around them, and again, it just slows us up and we don't want to be slowed up. We need to work as quickly and as safely as we can. So thank you very much. Um, can you spell your name again? Oh, sorry. Uh, Ray, R-A-Y Jarvis, J-A-R-V-I-S. And I am the director of public works for the city of South Lake Tahoe. How Thanks. How often do you guys come across vehicles that are parked like this? Very often. Like every day? Every day, yeah. Um, multiple, times day. multiple times a day. The police department um, helps us uh, as, as much as they can. Um, we try to warn folks and remind them that parking in the roadway is not a good idea. Uh, Lieutenant Stevenson's department is helping us, but they're also dealing with a lot of other issues related to the, the conditions, uh, traffic accidents and it, those kinds of things. So um, it's just a difficult situation. Um, <clears throat> Uh, that I don't know. The the operator didn't hit it hard. Um, How fast was he going? Well, they're typically going about four miles an hour. Or so, uh, but he's working in a very large snow berm, so that tends to slow them down a bit. Um, but yeah, I mean, it was basically he bumped into it, uh, recognized right off that 
there was a car there, got help, uh, and they were able to uh, help this woman out of the car and, as I said, to safety. So, Could she have gotten out if you guys hadn't bumped into her? Um, frankly, if we didn't know the car was there, um, it's hard to say how this would have turned out. I suspect it could have turned out uh, much differently. She was unable to roll down a window or... My understanding, my understanding is the vehicle was completely buried. And with this much snow, um, that's not uncommon. And she told police <coughs> when they got there and did come to speak to us that she told them that she was trapped. Uh, that's, that's what she said when, when they finally got out. Did she make any uh, attempts to get out of the car? Uh, that I don't know. Lieutenant Stevenson, are you? Yeah. I'll ask a question, but I'll ask you after you look forward. Uh, time is over. Okay. But um, she said she had been in the car for about four or five, four or five hours. So uh, how many hours do you think she had before she was probably fatal to well, um, hard to say. I don't know if uh, she had the vehicle running uh, to keep warm. Um, if that was the case, uh, I c as I said, it could have been a lot worse. Um, you know, if the car's not running, you're still exposed to those low temperatures. Um, you know, I, I don't know. I'm not a medical person, but um, like I said, I don't want to be repetitive, but it could have turned out far worse than it did. We're, we're actually very fortunate, as is she, that we bumped into her car. You start a car and it's buried in snow. I mean, what can happen? Carbon monoxide? Sure, like that. yeah, yeah. What, what happens when you start a car and it's completely buried like that? Well, you're exactly right. Your car will fill with carbon monoxide and we all know how that goes. Um, I've been with the city of South Lake Tahoe for about five and a half years now. Uh, I came here from Mammoth Lakes. I was there for about 10 years. We had a similar situation occur in Mammoth um, and it turned out very badly for two people. They were buried, they had the car running, uh, and that's precisely what happened. So we're, we're just very glad that this situation turned out the way it did. What time of the day was it that this suspicion was found? Um, 8.35 in the morning. 8.35 in the morning. So that would lead you to believe that she was probably sleeping yes. when she was buried. And Correct. She was buried. Yep. So, so she, was, she was trying to get warm and get out of the weather. So, so the uh, snow plow bumps, bumps the car, she pounds on the glass. I mean, what was that reaction like from the, uh, the snow plow, uh, snow plow uh, operator back there? I have, actually, I haven't spoken with the snow plow operator, um, but I'm sure he was as surprised as everybody else. Um, clearly, that's, it's not uncommon to find a car buried in a snow berm. Um, that's one thing, but when you discover there's somebody in there, um, that's quite a surprise. It doesn't happen. Very often, like I say, I've been in this business a long time, uh, and this is only the second time that we've <laughs> encountered a car buried in a berm uh, where somebody was in it. And nobody knew that car was buried, let alone there was somebody in it until the plow. Correct. Plow yep, exactly. Was, that, yep. Was, was, was her car buried in that berm? Was that berm just from the snowfall, or was it from an earlier pass? Was some of it from an earlier pass by a plow? Uh, uh, probably both. Yeah, and my understanding, and uh, Lieutenant Stevenson may uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but my understanding is part of that issue was related to private snow removal, stockpiling snow. So clearly there were large berms in town at that point in time just from the plowing, um, in addition to uh, the snow falling um, and, uh, you know, private uh, operators storing snow uh, in, in a way that tended to cover up that car. Quite possibly. She couldn't have driven out. Yeah, I, well, I don't know that she had, yeah, I don't know that she could have driven out at all, quite honestly. You mentioned citations earlier. What yeah. did they be cited for? Uh, well, it's uh, by city code, you're not permitted to park in the roadway during snow removal operations, um, precisely for the reason that it slows down operations, creates dangerous situations, clearly, um, for folks in this kind of a situation. Um, and for our operators, because, uh, you know, we, like I said, we don't want them getting out of their equipment to go try to find somebody to come move their car. It's always best if folks can just find a place to park their co car off the roadway. Was there anybody else on the car? I uh, don't know about that. Huh. My understanding is the car belonged to friends of hers. And Lieutenant Stevenson can speak to some of those things, I think. Yeah. yeah. Would you like to hear from Lieutenant well, Stevenson? It's your turn. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah, you're welcome. <laughs> Mr. Stevenson, 
Because the rule I was talking with you earlier. Yes, sir. Uh, again, I mean, how often do you encounter this? I mean, well. First of all, I'll just say I'll reiterate a little bit of what's been said in that, um, you know, we're really celebrating what wasn't a tragedy this time, and, and it really could have been. It's rare, um, you know, we talk about this when everything goes well, so uh, that's important to remember, that, you know, and I'm thankful it did. Um, and then shout out to our public works department. When, when you're talking about four weeks of massive snow removal in a city like this, it really is difficult. Uh, driving those machines is hard to do, it's dangerous, and uh, it's just a real reminder to everybody uh, in this community and visitors alike to not park on the roads, not just cars, all your stuff, from mailboxes to bicycles to snowblowers to buried stuff you were going to throw away next summer and didn't get to. Their equipment hits all of it and it really slows down the operation. Um, and then when we get as much snow as we've had like this, when everything gets buried and these guys are in the, the, the motor graders and they can't, and it's just white snow, it gets really dangerous. So they, I shouldn't say they hit stuff, uh, stuff gets in their way all day long and it ties up police resources because we were required to go out, which is why we responded on this particular call. Um, and it's just really, a, a, the delay is just, it, it, it's not only that, but the threats to life and property, et cetera. So, um, this turned out okay. They, they bumped the car. They realized there was a car there. Uh, they couldn't get to the driver door. They wanted to get to the driver's door, so the plow operator used the front, uh, uh, the front blade on the grader and he actually pushed snow away from the driver's side of the car. And then the public works uh, department and uh, the police officers grabbed shovels and started digging out the driver's side. And then, uh, you know, once the woman put her like hand on the glass, uh, startled them. Uh, then, you know, everybody started digging, you know, like they had a purpose, you know, they jumped in and really worked hard to get her out of there in a hurry because they didn't know what state or how long she'd been in the car, et cetera. So, um, can you comment as to where the woman is now? Was she relocated to the Tahoe warm room? I, uh, people self deployed to the warm room, so I, I don't know where she's at right now. What was her reaction when you got her out? Uh, I think she was very thankful. She thanked the people that got her out and she was okay. We offered medical attention. We actually called an ambulance and she said, no, I'm fine. So they canceled the ambulance, not knowing how long she'd been there. She was never seen by medical personnel. She was able to walk, talk, she was fine. Was she at the point of being panicked being trapped in there? I don't know. They didn't say. Well, was she known to you? I mean, you said uh, it would take a couple of days for her to try to find you. No, she's not known to me. I mean, I don't know her around town. I'm not sure if the other guys do. Uh, do you have any further description uh, on the woman, age, anything like that? She was 48. F yeah, 48. And how long, you know how long she's been living in this area, if you don't mind? I don't know. What was the, what was the end game, assuming there wasn't somebody? Because you didn't know when even you were, say, when you right. were digging out, you didn't know there was a woman in there. What, what is the procedure? Is it just, were you going to have the car towed away? So. Yeah, so we're towing the car. That's why we're there getting the car out of the way, document the damage that's done by the city operator, et cetera. It's, we, I feel like every day for the past four weeks, we've done this four or five times a day where they're hitting things in the snow. And every time it happens, it's about an hour and a half of them not plowing the roads because they have to either double check the equipment, fix it, we have to do a report, we have to take photographs, it's just a real drag. So in this particular case, we were gonna just tow the car. certain areas that are worse than others, residential that So during snow removal conditions, you can't park anywhere in the city easement. You have to do off-street parking, period. That's, so it doesn't matter where you are in the city when snow removal conditions are in effect. Even if there's legal parking normally, you can't park in the city easement, and the city easement's deep. It's, it's not just to the edge of the pavement. It includes the sides of the road, et cetera. So if you're in a residential area, you have to be in the driveway. That's correct. Yeah, not just in your driveway with the butt of your car sticking five feet out into the road. You got to be out in, uh, inside of the city easement. Was it 15 feet? I think pretty much. Rough, rough guess. It's usually 10 to 15 feet off the pavement. And that goes for commercial areas as well, side streets, or along state lines. Along every single street, yes, sir. So you're talking about four or five times a day. You guys are going out and taking some sort of collision report. Are those mostly vehicles or other property? Yeah, and that's probably only when it's really, really, really snowing. Uh, I would say a couple times a day. It's every, it's mostly cars. Don't you think, Ray? Yeah, and most cars are usually fully buried. They're, yeah, they're usually usually always buried. Once in a while, there's I think I can make it, 
by the plow driver, but that's pretty rare. They're really good at driving those things. Um, it's and it, they're not easy. Like I said, a lot of respect for those guys. I, you know, it's kind of, you expect it as a police officer to like, you know, kind of deal with bad stuff once in a while. Our public works department, uh, I, they, they put up with a lot during snow removal. There's just a lot of emotions and feelings and people can get pretty angry, so. Well, the, he, Ray can talk about berms, the, the science of snow berms. Yeah. Typically, they don't, you know, they just go around it. They call it in. Our, we have a community service officer depart, department. They'll either write a citation, they'll tow it, and in storms like this, the problem is the cars get so buried, you can't get the car out. Mm -hmm. So then Public Works has to show up in a loader. The loader has to dig the car out. Then the tow truck will show up and tow the car. So it just... Then we have to wait for the loader, we have to wait for the tow truck, the tow yards are running out of room to store all the cars, just slows everything down. Was it Logan's towing that towed the car? Uh, it's the only tow company we use, so I'll assume it was. Is there going to be a, any change in procedure moving forward? Because there was the chance if this woman didn't make herself known, yeah. that some that you could have towed it away with, with her in it. Right. Uh, well, well, we wouldn't have towed it away with her in it, so procedure, I mean, we check cars when we like okay, get them so out and tow them. Yeah, you don't yeah. Just assume there's nobody in no. There, even if you can't yeah, I can't. It out. Right. You have to get visual confirmation before you can proceed. To tow yeah. I mean, typically they, the tow the the tow drivers usually get into the car anyway because they'll put it in neutral and manipulate things. So. How much time elapsed between when the plow bumped the car, police arrived and started digging it out, and she finally put her hand? On the uh, about 10 minutes, 15 minutes, long enough for the front blade to push, I mean, it's, this the snow bank was, it's like this high. It's huge, so it, there's a lot of, you know, they had, they had to dig for a while, 15. Can you comment as to whether the operator received any kind of disciplinary action or citation for bumping into the woman? No, not at all. The plow drivers are actually exempt when they're in process uh, from the rules of the road. Um, uh, they, they, they for good reason. I mean, everyone's seen plows out on the road. They're exempt from the rules of the road. They're not held liable for these types of things, especially when a car is completely buried. So um, it, it, it's really the owner of the vehicles that are responsible for the damage to their cars. Because there was nothing there that would indicate there was a crime. No. So a couple more things, guys, and then we'll let you go. I, I think I think what we, we, sh we should be very clear about here is that we brought you here today. Uh, could you uh, David, like David, and then Stevenson, S-T-E-V-E-N-S-O-N. And your title? Uh, I'm a lieutenant with the South Lake Tahoe Police Department. Sorry. Uh, all righty. Um, so we brought you here today because this is a good news story, and these things don't always end in good news stories. A couple things to note. We do know that the woman was homeless. Um, she had been walking around the casinos for some time and kind of got tired of walking around the casinos and then got into an acquaintance's car and fell asleep and that's what started sort of the chain reaction of events that we're talking about here today um, we're not talking about the woman mainly because she didn't do anything wrong and we don't really want to embarrass her um, she's homeless she's clearly going through a lot um, we're glad we got her out safe we're we're glad that this did not end in a tragedy like it could have so thank you guys so much for coming today if you have any questions we're around um, thanks appreciate it guys Sure. You wish this never happened because sure. someone went through stuff. However, because it was a happy ending, and this isn't the only area digging or dealing with that, and you know, CNN covered it. Right. In a way, are you kind of glad that this did come about because it could possibly stop something that could be bitter? We're glad that it was a happy ending, that's for sure. And I look, I know that all your viewers come up here to vacation, or some of them have second homes up here. They know what it's like when it snows up here, um, and, and they get it. The whole reason the story came out in the first place is because we're trying to get the message across that we don't want people to park in these areas that puts them in danger, that puts our snowplow operators in danger, that puts their cars in danger. Look, we don't want to tow cars and site cars. We want to get snow off the road and get people back to traveling safely. That's our goal, right? Um, anytime we have to stop and deal with things like this, that becomes a problem. So am I glad it happened? No, I wish it never happened. But am I glad that people that can get the message that this kind of stuff is very dangerous, and this story had a very happy ending. Yeah, I think that's a good message to get out. It's your press conference, but you're kind of in part doing it for other departments who have the same message. 
Sure. I mean, I think I think we're doing this for anybody who travels on snowy roads in this kind of situation. It's dangerous to park in snow removal operations. It's dangerous to sit in a snow covered car. It's dangerous. Um, this could have been a lot worse. We're happy it's not. Thanks, guys. I appreciate it.